We've got ChatGPT for text, we've got Midjourney for images and Runway for videos. So what about 3D modeling? Stick around as we explore a real world application of AI 3D modeling, the current capabilities, and if they can actually accelerate our workflow, even if you're brand new to 3D modeling. So Meshi lets us turn our text into 3D models. And then these are the featured models. So kind of the best quality we can expect. Um, but I've got a plan so that we can use them in arc viz and advertising and beyond. So just remember that this is the worst that AI to 3D models are ever gonna be, and it's likely to develop really quickly. So if you just look at the first mid journey compared to the latest version and the speed that that happened, and this is just Meshi 2. So let's have a look at how Meshi works and then we'll take a look at a practical example. So we'll go over to text to 3D, and one use I see for this is creating hard to find models that I wanna pose in my scene. So rather than spending ages trying to model it or trying to find models online, we can write something in text to 3D. So let's say my client has a very certain breed of dog and they want it in their 3D image. So I'll write a West Highland White Terrier sit him and we'll put this onto realistic. You can add negative prompts. So for example, if you didn't want any blue in the 3D model, then you can type that in here and we'll hit generate. And then you're gonna get back something like this and we're gonna have a few options. So from far, if you look at like the small thumbnail, they actually look pretty good and you can choose on which one you like the best. So I think this guy without a collar and then all we have to do is hit refine. So this normally takes a few minutes to generate. So whilst that's generating, now's a good time to thank Meshi for sponsoring this video and offering you guys a discount. So if you wanna get some credits and try what we're doing today yourself, then you'll find a link up here or down under near the video. All right, and this is the refined model. Doesn't look too bad at all. We can change the texture settings here. But what I think is really cool about this is if we go to the wireframe, we can actually change the mesh settings to quads. We can reduce the amount of quads that are here. So I actually did that to quads and load the reds here. And I think it actually does a really nice job. So this is where AI 3D modeling is at. So now let's see if we can actually use this in production. So let's see if Meshi can help us solve the problem of finding a very specific model for our scene. And not only that, let's see if we can generate a model that we can rig, animate, and then light in our 3D scene. So this is the 3D model we're gonna use. And if you wanna follow along and learn how to create this, then there'll be a link somewhere around this video as well that you can check that out. So first up, the text prompt in Meshi. I uh, found this in the features page and I saw the text prompt was here. So I actually copied some of these later prompts, highest quality, best quality, studio quality. So let's hope it's quality with the amount of times I've written quality. So I'll paste that in, high quality, photorealistic, chef, T-post, run it on realistic and we'll hit generate. And this is what it came back with. So we've got a few options we can choose from. We're gonna go with this one and we'll hit refine. And once it's refined, we're gonna get back something that looks like this. For what I've got planned, I think this is gonna work just great. So we can download this. I'm gonna download it as an FBX. So hit download and we will look at rigging this character. All right, so Mixamo is an awesome tool from Adobe that just doesn't seem to get much love, but it's a really fast way to rig your characters. So all we have to do is hit upload a character and I'll upload the FBX we just downloaded. And we'll rotate him so he's facing forward. We'll hit next and now we apply a few points as per this image. So we've got the chin, let's put the wrists in, the elbows, knees about here, and then the groin somewhere around there and we'll hit next and now our model is going to be rigged it's going to take around two minutes all right there he is and then we have absolutely loads of different animations we can add to our character we can have him do some push-ups um some dancing oh no all right so i'm going to type in table because i want him in front of a table there's some pretty interesting stuff so like if he is cooking something like this i actually think that that might work pretty well he could be like sprinkling salt into a pan and i'm going to turn up 
this character arm space. And I actually think that that is going to work pretty well. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to hit download. FBX will be fine. All of the defaults are great. So we'll download that and then we'll get into 3D and we'll pose him. All right, so in our 3D program, you can use any 3D program. I'm gonna go File, Import, and the defaults will be fine. And let's hide unselected and I'll go to the front view. And here he is in our 3D package. So if I hit play, there he is doing the business. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is scale him. So I'll just group him first. And I'm gonna create a box that is like one, I think I'm about that tall. And I'm just gonna ground the pivot. So then we're gonna scale from the ground and make him roughly that big. And then another thing we wanna do is take a look at his material. So currently he's got physical material. Um, I'm gonna be rendering with Corona. So let's add a Corona physical material. And I'm gonna plug that into the base and I'm actually gonna add a um, color correction. Just because I think them shadows are a bit harsh. So if we go to advanced, let's turn up the gamma and apply this to our guy. So that's the material done. And let's also, I'm gonna hide the helpers and we can unhide all. I hit to the top view, select our guy and let's put him in position. So somewhere around here, he's gonna be doing the cooking. Maybe something like this. Go to our front camera. All right, there he is. So we can position him how we want. So I reckon somewhere like that. Perhaps we can bring him forward a little bit. But that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Oh, one other thing regarding that material, let's make sure there's no reflections on him. Let's go to the render settings and we'll just use single frame. One other tip here is you can, if you wanted to earlier, I was playing around and I actually rendered out multiple frames. So him in different positions just to try it out. But I know that we want this frame and I'll hit render and I'll come back once this is rendered. It shouldn't take too long. All right, so this is the render out. So we're now gonna head over to a tool called Magnifique. I love this tool. It's kind of an upscaler with an AI twist. And if you wanna know more about it, then you can check out my other video. So the focus of this is the chef and not the rest of the image. So what I'm gonna do is go to upload and I'm gonna upload our image. And let's just hit upscale and let's see what this does. All right, so this is what it's done. So not much better, but what we can do is put a prompt in. So I'll write a happy chef. And then we've got some other sliders we can use. So hallucinate allows us to add some additional details. So let's crank that up to two. And then resemblance, this will, if we increase it, it's gonna stay more like the original image. So we don't actually want that. So let's try that on two and minus two. All right, and that's come back. It's looking better, but we need more. So I'm gonna put the creativity up to six and let's put resemblance like a minus four and we'll upscale again. All right, I think we are pretty close to this guy. A few things that we're gonna play with, but to go from this to this looks great. So let's download that image and we'll head over to Photoshop. So over here in Photoshop, I've got the original render without the chef in and I'll just drag and drop our chef on top. And let's see if we can just select the subject. All right, not perfect, but let's use that. Um, I'm actually gonna hide the background. And let's start masking some of this stuff in and out. I mean, that hand's not too bad for AI. Uh, we'll keep his chef hat on. That hand's gonna need a little bit of work. But yeah, he looks pretty good. 
So there he is masked in. I want to add a slight brightness and contrast. So I'll hold Alt, so it's just going to affect that bottom layer. And let's just turn him up a little bit. Maybe we can pull that contrast down. And another thing to get him sitting a little bit better is if I jump back down to our bottom layer and kind of select a whitish color from here, um, I'm going to add a solid color. And I'm just going to put that on color. And again, just have it affecting the layer below. So it's only going to affect him. And let's pull that down to like, I don't know, pretty low. But you can see that it's just going to help with the colors sitting in the image a bit better. And I think it's all right. Maybe here we need some work. And also, I'm going to sort out this hand quickly. He's looking pretty good. A couple of other things, obviously, in Photoshop we can use some generative fill so maybe here let's add some steam coming from the pan you can take your time on this but some steam looks pretty cool maybe we want to add let's have some flour flour on the table flour just looking at steam we need to get rid of that bit I mean, that looks all right. That's better. Oh, yeah. All right, that's cool. Um, you could add like tea towels, maybe like a kid drawing over here or something like that. Um, but this would do for now. You can use generative fill. And then let's, I'm gonna duplicate and flatten all these layers. We'll take a look at camera raw. So put auto on, that looks nice. Although I'll lower the saturation a bit. Do like some clarity. And let's put some optics on. And maybe like a slight vignette. Oh, another cool tool we could actually use is Lumina Neo. We've got some really cool features in here. And this accent AI I really like, it really makes the images pop. You've got a lot of like super sharp magic lighting. We can add some like atmosphere. I don't think we really need fog in here. You can relight the scene. Um, you can even add sun rays in. If you wanted some coming in there, I don't think we need it, but we'll leave it on. Um, add some film grain. Great tools to look at. I've got another video on this, so you can check them out. All right, so this is what we had, and now we have our chef in our scene. So this is where tech is right now, and as 3D artists, we've got the skills to start using and refining the outputs from these tools. So there were some comments on the last video about the tools not working straight out of box. Not yet, but with some tweaking, you can still get some pretty good results. I think it's good to know about these tools, especially as they're developing so fast. So I encourage you to explore Meshi, use the code, and thanks again to Meshi for sponsoring the video. And if you want to stay up to date, then consider subscribing to the channel and the email newsletter. And if you like this video, then I think you're going to love this one.